Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Computer History from us here at Digilog Collection. Today I want to talk about the great Atari 800, part of the Atari 8-bit uh, computer line. <clears throat> the Atari 800 and its, its, its brother Atari 400 appeared on the market because uh, Atari's previous venture the very successful Atari 2600, while it, it, it sold in good numbers, um, it really didn't have a future, um, a long-term future, that is, uh, or at least that's what the Atari engineers felt at the time. And they wanted to come up with a machine that can be um, expanded, it is more powerful to start with, um, and it's also a personal uh, computer which they wanted to a market which is a market that they wanted to tap into because at the time it started to feel like a home computer market was considerably larger possibly than the um, home console market and of course the financial margins for a home computer uh, once you factor in for all the peripherals and so could definitely be quite larger than um, the money they could make say on a um, uh, Atari 2600 as time passes by. So Atari 100, um, uh, it, it was an important computer and, and it's a lot to talk about it. I have a lot of peripherals I want to go through, uh, software, insides and outside, competitors. Uh, so I'll split this uh, episode in two parts. Uh, first we're going to talk about a bit of the history, the unit, uh, what peripherals Atari and other companies uh, provided with the machine. Um, and in the second part, we'll talk about the software that's available, open it up and delve a bit more in, in the technical aspects of it. So the production of the uh, Atari 1400 started in uh, 1979 and the entire, uh, what now today we call the Atari 8-bit 8, 8 computer line, uh, lasted for about 13 years until about 1992. The Atari uh, 800 itself uh, was only produced for about uh, four years or so until summer 1983, so from 79 to, to 1983. Um, there were two versions of this at the time initially. It was the Atari 400, the smaller brother uh, of this one, and, and, the, uh, and the Atari uh, 800. Uh, the names were given uh, such that they reflected the amount of uh, memory that's available in each unit. So the Atari 400 had four kilobytes of uh, DRAM, the Atari 100 here had eight kilobytes. Uh, what happened though, uh, as time passed by during the lifetime of those machines, uh, the memory price went down and as such the Atari engineers could basically ship them with more memory and eventually the Atari 100 towards the end of the life, uh, lifetime was actually shipped with four, uh, 48 kilobytes of uh, memory. Um, so what were the competitors at the time uh, for, the, for this machine? Well, in 1979 the machine appeared you had the, uh, the usual trinity of uh, Commodore, PET on one side, uh, Tandy TRS on the other, and the Apple II. The, um, in 1982, however, uh, the real competitor of the machine came out in the form of Commodore 64. Only that machine was, had enough uh, processing power and graphic capabilities to really rival what Atari has done uh, basically three years earlier, in 1979. Alright, let's talk technical terms. The core of the Atari uh, 8-bit computer line, and definitely the Atari 100, lies the uh, Motorola 6502 processor. It ran at 1.79 MHz speed um, in, in US and 1.77 in PAL regions. Beside that, then to help with all its graphic capabilities and sound and so on, the Atari had uh, three custom chips. And, and it's important to remember that this was one of the first machines to have custom chips, uh, integral chips designed specifically for it. Um, the, two, the first two custom chips, called uh, one was called Antic, A-N-T-I-C, and the one is called uh, CTIA and uh, late, late, later named uh, GTIA, uh, helped with, with, with graphics and, and, um, and, and the um, connection between the console and the television. And the third one, called Pokey, dealt with anything, um, uh, serial connections as well as sound. And the, 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 the three 
uh, custom processors plus the 6502 running at a decent speed for the time um, made this machine pretty powerful. C keep in mind, for example, that the uh, Commodore 64, which came three years later, only had a one megahertz uh, 6502 while it, while, it, while it definitely had more memory uh, and the seed was nice for sound uh, the Atari for the time in, 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 in the very late 70s and early 80s was a powerful machine and, and it sold quite well and, and I think over the lifetime of something about two or so million computers were sold by Atari in the entire 80 line but um, I thought it came also with a lot of um, peripherals for it, and, 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 and I have here a good selection of what was available at the time. Uh, initially, with the 800-400, uh, you could um, they, they were bundled in the box the uh, joystick that was the same as the Atari 2600 joysticks. Um, uh, there was a tape drive um, that you could, you could load, a, a disk drive. Um, as, as time passed by, and the next version of um, uh, the, the successor to Atari 100, which is the XC lines, um, Atari came up with, with, with better uh, higher performance peripherals. For example, we have the Atari 1050 uh, disk drive, we have the Atari trackball, the CX50, um, there's, there's, a, there's a printer uh, shipped to it, the Atari 1027, uh, we have um, a better um, tape drive, the original was 850, this is called the Atari 1010. Um, and there were a host of other. There was, there was a modem um, you could get at the time, um, provided basic, providing you basically with 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 a, with a very functional and, and full uh, computer. software. When it comes to that, the Atari uh, economy mainly use uh, cartridges like those. Um, they were designed specifically for the Atari 800 and 400. Um, while the Atari 400 came with one uh, cartridge slot, the 800 uh, actually sported two. And the reason there were two is that the, um, the, the, the left one was used as a, just a normal cartridge slot and the right one was intended by Atari to um, add extra features either to the uh, you know the software or game running or the machine like extra memory so um, there weren't many cartridges produced for the right slot and later uh, computers in the um, Atari 8-bit line did not have those uh, and in fact most of the cartridges like you see um, it says right here left uh, left cartridge, so you know where to um, where to insert it. I have here like a basic uh, missile command, um, the Atari writer, which was the word processor version, the uh, Atari released for their computers. Um, this later software also comes with uh, uh, on disks because well, you had the uh, disk drives that you could buy as a peripheral. So here is Temple Upshy, uh, pretty decent game for uh, the time. One interesting feature that you'll notice uh, that the uh, cartridge uh, slot is all surrounded by this uh, cast uh, aluminum block which actually extends on, underneath and covers um, the inside and that is because at the, at the time uh, FCC uh, had more stringent rules with respect to um, electromagnetic inter interference um, and since the inside here you have the, um, the TV uh, uh, tuner part, the output of the TV, um, in order to pass compliance, I thought you had to surround all that with a very thick aluminum block. That made the console really solid. I mean, this is, this is, this is one of the heaviest uh, console slash computer out there. Uh, it's also one of the most rugged. Um, it's one band break, um, but it was expensive to make. Um, so, um, later um, uh, models like Atari XC, Atari XL, and so on did not have uh, this. They used a different solution uh, to pass uh, FCC compliance. 